When should a fighter retire? That's the question. When should a fighter retire? Well, the reality is the fighters, we're the last ones to know because we're the ones that believe in ourselves and can't see the damage that we are doing to ourselves. And that is why we push on. And it is a story as old as combat sports itself. Fighters stick around past their best, past their expiration date. Then they go on a succession of losing fights one after the other. And it's heartbreaking to see, certainly as a fan, seeing your favourite fighter that was once a champion, struggling to get a win, losing, getting knocked out, getting choked out, submitted, whatever. It's very, very painful to watch. And it seems like the whole world knows this guy should retire, but they don't. And I am, of course, talking about Chris Wyman. And I apologise, Chris, if you see this. I'm a massive fan of Chris. As we know, the guy was an incredible champion. He was undefeated. He dethroned Anderson Silva. He defended against Leoto Machida and Vito Belfort. And then after that, lost to Luke Rockhold. And then, then came the knockouts. Of course, against Jacare Souza, against Gegard Mousasi, against Dominic Reyes. And then he snaps his leg against your right hall, which was just crazy. Because if you put that in a Hollywood script, a man is going to dethrone the greatest fighter of all time. And that greatest fighter of all time, Anderson Silva, is going to snap his leg. But then Weidman later on is going to break his own leg in a fight. Hollywood would say that that is too far-fetched. But as we know, that's what happened. Now, fair play to Chris Weidman. The man's an incredible wrestler, an incredible fighter, father, family man, just an all-around great guy. Made his return two and a half years later. Fought Saturday night at UFC 292 against Brad Tavares, who is a very tough fight for anybody. And sadly, didn't get the job done, but also it looks like he's seriously damaged his leg once again. At the post-fight press conference, Dana was saying that the UFC's doctor, Dr. Davidson, said probably, and he's guessing, no imaging, no MRI, probably an MCL or an ACL, but one of the cruciate ligaments. So you're probably looking at another year out, okay? And I hope I could be an inspiration to people who have had, you know, big setbacks in their life that you could, you know, come back from it uh, on the highest level. Whatever you want to accomplish, you could do it. Um, I'm not done, so I, 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 uh, I'll be back better than ever. But this was a good uh, opportunity for me to get back in the octagon. And it was. It was a good opportunity, but it didn't go his way. Now, I don't think he looked bad. Just Brad Tavares had a great game plan. Chipping away at his bad leg. Wyman even went on to say... I can't believe he leg kicked me. I, I'm, <laughs> when he started leg kicking me, I was like, you bastard. You're such a nice dude. Why are you freaking leg kicking me? And then when he kicked my surgery leg, that's what got pissed me. That's kind of what pissed me off. Now, I did go on to say that his legs are hurt pretty bad. He's in a wheelchair. The surgery leg is kind of puffy, but he doesn't think there's any serious damage. My, my, the, both legs hurt pretty bad. I'm, I'm in a wheelie chair that they're pushing me in and also dragging me in. Uh, who would have thought? But um, yeah, the, the surgery leg one, that one's pretty puffy. I don't think there's any serious damage. But it's not just about him. It's also about Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson is the same story. He was incredible. He went on a 12-fight win streak. He was matched up with Habib a bunch of times. He fought for the interim title, lost to Justin Gagey, and now he's lost six in a row with four of those coming by way of stoppage. And Tony Ferguson is 39 years old. Chris Weidman is 39 years old. Maybe it's time to retire. As I say, when you're put on this sport, when this is what you feel like you were built to do, what you were destined for, it's why you've made great money, you provide for your family, you get the adoration from the fans, you walk out there in front of 20,000 people and they're all screaming your name, the thrill, the adrenaline, the rush of winning a fight, getting your hand raised, jumping on top of that octagon and thrilling the fans. It's such a rush, but it's so hard to walk away from. But it's a tale as old as time. We see it all the time, right? But fighters need to know. Look, listen, I get it. I've been there. I stuck around probably too long as well. I had one eye and now I've got no knees. I've got a broken back. I've got a terrible neck that needs two more surgeries. I already have a titanium plate in there. I need to have surgery on my wrist. This sport is unforgiving. And not just mixed martial arts, boxing, kickboxing, it takes a real toll on your body. But then when you see someone like Weidman, who's such a great guy, who was such a great champion, and now he's struggling, now he's losing fights, and now his body's messed up again, and there's a potential for another surgery, what's happening? Listen, if he comes back and he chooses to fight and he goes on a tremendous win streak, then I will be so happy for him. But the reality is Saturday night, he looked like he was getting a bit older. He tried the takedowns. They weren't there for him. In the past, Chris Weidman could take people down just like that. His wrestling was absolutely phenomenal. Now, I'm not saying he looked bad, but surely he's getting old. 39 years old. 
that's probably time to hang it up. For Tony Ferguson, it's definitely time to hang it up. 39 years old as a lightweight. In the lightweight, you rely on speed and reflexes and instincts even more than the heavier guys. Heavier guys, power's a big part of it, and power is always the last thing to go. That's why you see heavyweights going for a very, very long time. So I don't enjoy saying this. I don't enjoy saying this, but I do think probably Wyman should retire. I mean, he's not going to become a champion again. Of course, we do this for money. That's the primary reason why we do this. We're prize fighters. We want to earn. Yeah, okay, the attention that you get from people, that feels nice, okay? And to walk out there and put a show on for all your fans, that's an incredible feeling. But we do this for our families to provide for them. And your families, more than anyone, don't want to see you going out there and continually getting knocked out. Now, granted, that wasn't the case for Chris Weidman. He gave a good account of himself, but he didn't get the job done. For Tony Ferguson, he lost last time by arm triangle to Bobby Green. Then he got choked out by a triangle against Nate Diaz, got knocked out against Michael Chandler. That's three finishes in a row. He was knocked out against Justin Gagey. At one point, this man, you could hit him with a baseball bat and he wouldn't flinch. That's how he won his fights. But having that take five to land one attitude is not conducive to a long career. And that's why it's kind of catching up with Tony. He came out today and here's what he had to say. He said, I haven't sparred since Barboza or Thompson. Two, the only time I find myself in a cage is when I fight. Three, since the pandemic, none of this shit has been fun. That wasn't fun for anyone though, was it? Four, I used to smile a lot more when I was competing. Five, I've been so busy taking care of others instead of myself. He goes on to say, seven, I created boundaries between myself and those who are bad for me. That's very smart. Eight, I structured myself so I don't make the same mistakes. Nine, no, I'm not retiring and F those who think I should. Ten, I have work to do. And I'm one pissed off mother effer, champ shit only. Listen, we love Tony Ferguson. We love his attitude. We love what he brings to the table. He's a bit of a, he's a, bit of a crazy guy, right? But I feel like, again, the time has passed him by. And we see this all the time. I mean, there's so many examples. Anderson Silva. I talked about him a minute ago. One of the greatest fighters of all time. Towards the end, couldn't win fights. Losing to people like Uriah Hall. Went on quite the losing streak. BJ Penn. BJ Penn was one of the greatest fighters. One of the best talents we've ever seen. A two-weight division champion. I think he lost his last seven in a row. And again, I could go on all day. Vanderlei Silva, Chuck Liddell, Rashad Evans, Josh Koscheck, Kazushi Sakuraba, Antonio Minotauro Noguera. What a legend he was. Mark Coleman. We're going old school, you know, but it's, it's true. It's true. And they stick around for too long. Now, listen, I get it. I get it. I understand the rush, but, and it's hard to walk away from. Certainly when this is the only thing that you've done, you put your entire life, all your energy, all your efforts into this. And you've got to be so single-minded to become a great. And by the way, all those names that I just mentioned, all fantastic fighters, all made their mark and left their mark on this sport. That is for damn sure. But you've got to be so single-minded that sometimes you don't have anything else to do. Now, I've been very lucky in my career. I came out and I've got a decent job commentating. I do a bunch of stuff. I do the podcast. I do the YouTube. And I've got a few things going on. I'm very, very lucky. But some fighters don't have that. They're not as lucky or they haven't worked as hard or they haven't tried to set themselves up. Some people don't want to do things like that. So that's why they stick around. But it's such an unforgiving sport. And it's only a matter of time before more and more damage gets done. Right? This sport is a bitch. It's as simple as that. And you've got to know when to walk away. That's why you need good people around you. Good coaches, good family members, good teammates, people that you trust. When Dana White said that at the press conference, he was saying that because he cares. Dana does care about the fighters, regardless of what you're all going to say. Call me a company man all you want. I'll never forget when my retina redetached, I was supposed to fight Mark Munoz and I had to have a surgery. So I called Dana. I said, look, listen, my retina is redetached. I've got to have surgery, but there's still six weeks to the fight. So I'm going to have the surgery. I'll rest. And then I just don't, won't do any sparring and I'll still go out there to Manchester and have the fight. And Dana was like, what are you talking about? You're not fighting, Mike. No way. And that's not because of any other reason. He was trying to give me the best advice that I needed and I was I was out of my mind but that's what fighters are we all believe in ourselves so much and you have to you have to that you believe in yourself to where it becomes a detriment so if I've caused any offence to anyone any names that I just mentioned I sincerely apologise because it's not coming from a malicious angle at all and if Chris Wyman continues to fight then I wish him the best of luck and I look forward to seeing what he can do but I think it's time I think it's time that he starts to think about having that serious conversation with his family. Tony Ferguson, the same thing. But still, let me know what you think in the comments because 
it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because the reason being, you feel like you can get one more. You feel like you can get back to winning ways. And when you've been a champion, you've had an incredible career. Nobody wants to retire on the end of a losing streak because that's what you're remembered for. You're only as good as your last fight. That's what they say. But legends like Chris Wyman and all those people that I just mentioned, they will always be remembered for the good times, for the action, for the knockouts, for the championship wins. So rest assured, your name will go down in the record box as a brilliant champion and fighters that made a massive contribution to this sport. Well, let me know what you think in the comment section. Subscribe, ring the bell. I'll see you soon.